Hey, this is just a quick video on replacing the pull start rope and handle on a 1999 Polaris Sportsman. The process should be pretty much the same for pretty much any year make and model. The innards inside parts uh, mechanically might be slightly different from brand to brand, but if you're just uh, replacing the rope and or the handle, you know, this should be pretty much the same throughout, I would imagine. I've done it on a few other things over the years, lawnmowers, chainsaws, and you know, the, the concept of how, how it works is very similar on all of those. Um, but again, different shapes, sizes, you know, brand names, stuff like that. Of course, that's gonna vary. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is take that cover off real quick. And as you can see, I've already taken all the plastics off this wheeler. Uh, I did that in a previous video. If you're interested in that, you can take a peek at that. Um, I took this cover off once already. When I picked this wheeler up, it had uh, no handle on it. And there was just some duct tape, you know, sealing this up to keep water and, and stuff out of there. So I assume the handle probably broke off, but before ordering any parts or looking for any parts, I took the cover off just to make sure that that was the only issue. And sure enough, you know, the rope was in there, broken off. Um, so I'll take the, the bolts off this cover real quick. So you got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts. This top left one is a longer bolt, at least on mine. Um, and I don't know how well you can see it, but in here, just above this bolt, there's a small hole. And my initial instinct was, huh, did it bolt break off in there? What's up with that? But it's actually just a guide pin to get this thing on. And you gotta press down on the brake lever, maybe and kind of finesse it around. Boom. And there you go, off. So that's inside. When I, when I opened that up, um, I saw the rope in there still had broken off. So I'm fortunate that I don't need to do uh, anything with this inner deal. I don't know if you see when you spin this counterclockwise, and that's how you preload it. And then you tie the rope on you know, with all the rope hanging out, and you let go. And and it winds it back up. That's the deal. They say six to seven turns, and we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this up real good since I got it off. Take some steel wool to it, make it all shiny and new, and get the dirt and stuff off before putting it back on. So I'll uh, I'll get ready to put the rope on here, and I'll show you that here real quick. Here it is. I've uh, cleaned it all up a bit. You know, hit it with some stainless, or I'm sorry, some uh, steel wool. That's what I meant. Steel wool and. Uh, all I need to do on mine is replace the, the pull rope and the handle. Um, but I, I feel like since I have it open, you know, other people might have another, other problems with it. This gasket's not the best, but it's okay. Um, I'm gonna live with it. Um, so you, got, you have one bolt holding this all together. When you take this bolt out, you wanna keep some pressure on the, the plastic wheel. Take that off. You're gonna see there's kind of a, a clip on there. And that has, whoops, that has to line up with your little, uh, you know, ratcheting deal here. Now underneath this is a coil spring, and that is what uh, makes your rope rewind. If you can free spin that, either your spring is toast or it just maybe came off track. So just kind of turn it counterclockwise, and if it returns, then that's not your problem and you may not even need to take that off. But I will gently take this off so you can see that. Because you gotta be careful though because that spring, this whole coil in here, can just pop right out of there and then you gotta kinda tighten it up enough again to get it back in. This is all greasy and stuff at the moment so I don't really, I'm not gonna pull it out of there just for the example. I just wanted to show you what's going on in there. It's retained here, there's a notch in a, a in the casting, there's a, a circle uh, to retain this whole spring inside it. Notch there to for one end, and there's kind of like a hairpin turn bend in it there. That lines up with the plastic, this rib on your plastic wheel. Um, so you have, when you put it together, you have to put it so those two line up and, you know, Turn it counterclockwise, and if it spins back like that, you're good to go. Here, there's a little spring. My little ratcheting arm came off. 
there's a spring in there. And let me see if it, uh, I believe, it's kind of hard for my eyes to get that right in the hole there. There you go. Now it is my belief that the long end of the spring, there's two lengths on there. I didn't look at it before I took it out, but just seeing how it looks here, how it's going together. You got a long leg on here and a short leg on here, little ears. I don't know if you can see that long and short. I'm putting the, sh the long end in the hole in the plastic wheel. Okay, it's in there. And then this part, I'm kind of putting this notch. If you can see that little notch right there against the spring first and then kind of finessing the arm into place and you can see it kind of it ratchets then I'm holding it in there so it doesn't fall back off. Um, then you got your retainer plate. I don't know if that's the proper word but it's retaining everything so that's what I'm calling it and it's a plate. So it's got a clip on there and that I'm lining up with you kind of put it on there and you spin it back and forth and you'll you'll feel it hit on both sides. All right, quick note on uh, my memory served backwards of uh, what it's supposed to be. This part is supposed to be oriented with that. The the open end should be opposite of this. I don't know if it, you sh can tell functionally when I put it on this the open ones up against it, nothing's really happening when I all started. But if you put this part of the clip up against there or near there, see when I turn that, you can see that coming up and that's what grabs to make the motor turn to, to start it up. So important, that's what you need. Orientation on that is key. And that seems to be the happy spot for it. That is not the right sock uh, wrench for that. Get it finger tight anyways for now, just to demonstrate for you. So now, if I spin this counterclockwise, the manual says when putting the rope in six to seven times, and if I let go of that, I only did it like four, I think, I don't know, I didn't, wasn't counting, I was yapping, but. And that's how it winds up your rope. You can do this, you know, you preload it six or seven times and you get that kind of lined up with your hole there. This is where the handle would be. Handle would be right there, poking through that hole right there and lining up with this hole. And then you gotta try to fish that through, pull it through here, tie a couple of knots. Then you got all your slack there and then you let go and it winds up in theory. That's the, the hope. All right, so 10 millimeter, by the way, that's what I ended up using on that. Um, so this is the replacement rope I got. I got Amazon, $15, $14.99. Um, if you go to a dealership or try to get the name brand one, yeah, as you know, it's probably gonna be about $1,000. <laughs> so, it's rope with a handle, that's it. And it's nice and soft around the collar here so it'll fit on that uh, part. I decided I'm gonna take this off because it came apart pretty nicely. I'm just gonna lift that off gently. I'm gonna feed the rope through here, through this hole, and I'm gonna test this to make sure that it does fit nicely on that collar. And that is, it's, it's like a press fit. You know, you gotta, use a little to get it off there, but it's, it's sealed up and that's the goal. You really don't want a bunch of water and debris getting in there. All right, so I'm gonna come at this a little different. I'm gonna preload the spring and then fish the, the uh, line through there, through here, and then you know lining that up and then tie the knot. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, Five, six. Man, that feels really tight, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there.
and just see how it winds up. And if it doesn't do the job, then I just add a wind. So then you got a little notch in your wheel. I'm going to put a screwdriver in there up against one of the little ribs on the casting, hoping it stays. <laughs> and then maybe go a little bit farther to the next one because it'll lines up better with, with my holes here. Then, fishing the line through there, take, pushing this still to line up a little better with that hole, and try to fish that through there. It takes a little finesse, but it's totally doable. So I can see the line in that hole in the wheel. I'm going to try to grab it with a hemostat here or a needle nose pliers or whatever. I'm just using this because it's much smaller and get in that hole easier. And there, that's through. So now, hoping that my screwdriver stays, I'm going to tie a couple of knots in this. And I don't know that six times is going to be the ideal uh, amount of times to preload that spring, seven maybe. It feel, felt pretty loaded <laughs> at six though. And I don't know if this length of this line is, or this rope is appropriate for this setup because it, it covered several models. And, you know, I'm, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna keep pressure on the wheel to keep it from spinning. I'm gonna hold that, the rope, and just gonna kind of let it wind itself back up and see where it ends up. I think that's pretty good personally. And that fits on there nice, compressed. If I pull it off, it goes right back to where it's supposed to. You know, and then you just wiggle that on there. And I could pull that way more than I need to to start this thing, but I don't know that that's an issue or not. I'll find out when I put it back together and, and see. But that's pretty much it, you know, just it went it went pretty good for me here I can see where a lot of things might go go sideways for you if you start taking everything apart but my goal was just to, to uh, replace that handle and rope and that seems to be all right so I'm gonna pop that back on the machine and maybe even give it a pull and test it now I got all the plastics and everything off that machine so I can probably put the seat on and give it a try but it's kind of kind of awkward um, but let's see we'll put it on so while this is apart I just want to show you there's that pin right there. Might not be able to see it real good, but there's a, a guide pin that lines up with one of these holes. Make sure your gasket's good. Mine's a little tweaked. Straighten that out. Then you're gonna, you know, you got your, your linkage for shifting forward and reverse and all that there. Kind of get that out of the way. You gotta push down on your foot pedal. And just kind of work it in there. Double checking that gasket. Then put all your screws back in. Nine screws. You got one that's an oddball length. One that's longer than all the others that goes on the top left. And then the rest, as you may. All the way around again, nine screws. All right, so I've reoriented that spring. It just, again, it's important, I guess, to share the, the oopsies as well so people can learn from it and use it to troubleshoot if they've had the same issue. Initially, I put that plate on 180 degrees from the way I should. Um, again, you wanna have the closed end of that clip against the rocker arm or near the rocker arm. So as it turns, it makes that uh, spring out and grab a hold and, and spin the motor to fire it up. Um, I'll put the uh, part number and link in the description of the video. If you just need to replace your rope, sometimes people have a handle where the rope goes through the handle and you just tie a knot and it's connected. This one was actually molded into, and for the price, I needed a handle, I needed a rope, so instead of just cutting a piece of random rope, you know, parachute cord or something, 
I just got the kit for $14.99. You can't beat that. It's all ready to go. So let's give it a pull and see if it works here. I would say it works. You can see got a little bit of slack here, you know, initially, which is good so you're not pulling from the motor. And then it fits nice on there. It's pretty tight. So overall, I'm happy with that. I would say that's uh, fixed. So I would call that a success. Uh, there's a little bit of slack in the, the pull initially before it engages, before that arm springs out and grabs, which is good. You're not bending over as much when you pull. Plenty of stroke. That fits on there nice and tight. I like that. You know, that's, again, I don't know that I'm going to, you know, need this much, hopefully not. It's just nice to have as a backup if you have a bad battery situation or something. And I like everything to work and wanted to seal up that hole and everything. It wasn't that big of a deal. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, the, the mechanism, you know, the pull start is similar on, on many, many different things. Chainsaws, lawnmowers, snowblowers, uh, snow machines or snowmobiles, depending on where you live. And what you call it in Alaska we call it a snow machine but anyways hopefully this was helpful um, there's a lot of other videos I made you know that have stuff I'm fixing on this uh, I took all the plastics off this thing in about 10 minutes there's a video on that to expose all these things just to make it a lot easier to get at and if uh, if it was helpful great and uh, we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching